Hi, it's bed rest coach Darlene Turner Lee. Today I'm coming to you with some tips for a better bed rest. And today we're talking about high blood pressure. Now high blood pressure is a common occurrence during pregnancy and one that can have some really serious consequences, especially if it progresses to preeclampsia, health syndrome, stroke, seizures, or even death. Now, um, I can't say that we can prevent this from happening, but we can kind of track what's going on. And today I wanna to share with you some tips for tracking your blood pressure while you're on bed, on bed rest. If your doctor has said to you that your blood pressure is rising or it's a little bit high or that you may even have gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, normally I would think that they would say track your blood pressure at home, but what I'm finding is this is not the case. In fact, in the past six months or so, I've had a friend who had um, gestational hypertension. She delivered and was actually discharged home with high blood pressure that continued for about three weeks postpartum. At the same time, she developed an intracranial bleed in the base of her brain. And until she and her husband pressed and pressed L&D to admit her, and she was finally actually admitted through the emergency room, was her intracranial bleed even noticed? Now, if this had gone on and on, she probably would have died. And in fact, I know of a mom who died very early on in the postpartum after delivering, most likely due to gestational hypertension or preeclampsia. This doesn't need to happen. Nobody wants to see it happen. That's the worst of all possible outcomes. We don't want that. And what I'm proposing today is that you become an active partner in your health care. Now, how can you do this? You're saying, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about this. Well, you can monitor and track your blood pressure at home. It's really easy to do. All you need is a blood pressure cuff. Now, there are all kinds of blood pressure cuffs on the market. I have here with me my professional one that I have used when I practiced. It's a blood pressure cuff that I wrap around client or patient's arms. It has the dial here where I record the blood pressure, the bowl to pump the the armband up and then I have my stethoscope. Now this is fine if this is a two-person job where you know one person's doing the blood pressure and the other person's patient but it's really kind of hard to do if you're on your own. Now if your husband or your mom or someone who's around you is going to take your blood pressure this is fine but what I think is really best is if you have a blood pressure system that you can use basically whenever you want to. If you want to take your blood pressure first thing in the morning when you first wake up and right before you go to bed, boom, it's easy to do. There are all kinds of blood pressure cuffs on the market. There are the kind that you can just sit on the table. It has a cuff attached. You slide your arm in, you press a button, it reads your blood pressure. And what I have here that we have at my house is a little wrist blood pressure cuff. Really cute. You put this around your wrist. This is the dial and the readout. Actually, I had it upside down, I'm sorry. You would push the yellow button, it'll read, tell you your blood pressure, the upper number, lower number, it gives you your pulse, date, and time. Boom, real easy to do. You just simply put it on your wrist and you wanna have the face of the uh, monitor facing you, obviously, so you can read it. And it just simply takes your blood pressure. Now, a lot of people will be thinking, why, why should I do this? My doctor does that whenever I go to my office visit. And that's true. It's a really good thing, and it's something you always have to track um, with every pregnant woman, especially those who are in the high-risk category. But by taking your blood pressure at home and kind of tracking what it's doing, you can see if it changes from, say, 120 over 80, 120 over 80, 120 over 80, 150 over 100. Whoa, that's a huge jump. Why did it happen? What's going on? That would prompt me if I saw that to call my doctor and say, hey, I have six readings of 120 over 80 and now I have a 150 over 100. Why is that? What do I need to worry about? What should I be doing? Should I come in? Your doctor would probably thank you for that because that's data he or she can't get. You're, they don't have you there all the time. Even if you go in once a week, they don't have that kind of data. So that's great. Um, I also recommend people that they get a little notepad, which is, I mean, just a little cheapo thing. These, these are not any, this is a little Texas one. I went to something and they were handing them out. Just a little cheap notepad. And whenever you take your blood pressure, write down the date, the time, the numbers. And then if you feel like anything that's going on, like just ate, have a headache, 
fought with husband, um, feel sick to my stomach, stood up, felt dizzy. This is stuff that your doctor can use and say, hmm, if this is what's going on, maybe we need to make some adjustments. But it's also data that he or she won't readily have if you don't bring it in. And again, you're not making any diagnoses. You're not making any suppositions. You're just tracking what's going on so that you can also be A, informed, be an active part of your healthcare team, and bring something to the table here and say, look, you know, you told me I have preeclampsia. I want to know what type of danger I may be in or not. I want to know, you know, what's going on with my body. And I, I am almost positive, at least in my experiences, most doctors have no problem with that. In fact, they welcome it because, again, you're bringing in valuable information that they can't otherwise get. So, again, if you're on bed rest, especially for gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, get a little home blood pressure monitoring kit. They run only about 20 or 30 bucks. You get them at any Target, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS, um, any pharmacy, anywhere that has any type of pharmacy or medical goods. And, you know, just, just do little every now and then kind of checks. Also, if at some point you're not feeling well, check your blood pressure. If, if blood pressure is your issue and see, is something going on? Is something changing? do I need to call my doctor? My rule of thumb is if it's a concern to you, it should be a concern to them. Give them a call. But you can also say, hey, I stood up. I felt dizzy. I took my blood pressure and it was 150 over 90. Should I be concerned? If it's been 150 over 90 for a while, your doctor may not be concerned. But again, if it's been 120 over 80, they may want to check you out. They may want to have you come in for an extra visit no harm, no foul, and especially if you're just calling in. And it, sometimes they'll say, well, fax, fax me your log. So you take your little piece of paper, you fax it. Or if you don't have a fax machine and they have an email, you sit down, you email, you put them on an email, send it to them. And he can look at it, she can look at it, they can give you a call back. But again, rather than you kind of sitting there fretting, not knowing what's going on, wondering should I be concerned, is this something I need to worry about, take the data, share it with your physician, and then take the next steps. Real easy, real simple, and I think it'll give you and your physician some great peace of mind. So that's all I have for today. Just a little quick tip on how to manage, not manage blood pressure, but kind of stay in the loop on your blood pressure when you have gestational hypertension or preeclampsia. I'm Darlene Turner-Lee, bed rest coach. Thanks for joining me today.